Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wassalamu ala ashrafil khalqi wal mursaleen. By this video, we start, we start and initiate series of videos on the topic of Islam and biomedical ethics. In order to understand this relationship, we need first of all to clarify and highlight the uh, main points of intersection between Islam as religion on one hand and medicine as profession on the other hand. In order to understand the relationship between Islam and biomedical ethics and how interrelated they are, we need first of all to highlight the points of intersection between Islam and medicine as profession. In this episode, I would like to uh, discuss with you this intersection between Islam as religion on one side and medicine as profession on the other side at the level of objectives. Uh, Islam as a way of life or called Sharia or Shara, the main objective of it as formulated by Muslim religious scholars basing their understandings on consulting the main sources of Islamic legislation, namely the Quran and the Sunnah, they formulated the main objective of the Islamic way of life of Sharia in uh, two points, uh, achieving benefit and avoiding harm. Jalb al-Maslahati wa dar al-Mafsadati as they say in Arabic. And when they looked at medicine, or medical profession in general, they found that the main objective of medicine clearly and strongly intersects with the main objective of Sharia. Why? Medicine throughout history, not only in the past but till the day of today, the heart of it, the main center of it, the main objective of it is to maintain health when it is there maintaining health, preserving health, the prevention of disease, etc. And the other side of the, of the coin is restoring health when it is missing for one reason or another. And the religious scholars found that preserving health when it, is, when it is there and restoring it when it is missing, this is exactly a significant part of the benefits that is to be achieved by the Sharia and significant part of avoiding the harm that also to be realized by Sharia. For instance, Al-Izz ibn Abd salam a prominent religious scholar from the 13th century, formulated like this. He said medicine is like Shara, is like the Islamic way, uh, is, the, is, is like the Islamic way of life. Why? Because medicine has been introduced, and I quote him, it has been produced to achieve the benefits of wellness and health, and to avoid the harms of ailments and diseases. So the benefits of wellness and um, uh, the benefits of wellness and health, uh, 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 as formulated by Laz ibn Abd Salam, is a significant part of the benefit in the broad sense of the word to be achieved by Sharia and avoiding the harms of ailments and diseases. This is also a significant part of the harm to be avoided by Sharia. Also, al -Shatibi, this is uh, not uh, um, exclusive to al Izz ibn Abd salam to come with this formulation and uh, stressing the similarity and intersection between Islam and medicine, but also other scholars like, for instance, al Shatibi, again prominent religious scholar, especially in the uh, science of the objectives of Sharia, is from the 14th century, uh, he uh, described Shara or Islamic way of life in one sentence. Shara is the supreme physician. al shara huwa tabib al-a'zam. So uh, Shara has been introduced by God into life in order to heal people, to maintain and preserve their health and to restore it when it is missing. But the main difference is that health here is understood in the broadest sense of the word. Not only physical, but also psychological, spiritual, religious, etc. So at this level, the level of, of objectives, we see a clear intersection between Islam and medicine, noticed and realized and explained by Muslim religious scholars throughout history. Thank you.